It's important that as we live out our days, we grow in knowledge. It's always a mistake to partake in customs and celebrations that we do not know the history of. Embracing traditions that we do not know the history of can often lead us in celebrating false deities and make us out to be hypocrites to what we truly believe. Knowledge is power, and regardless of what you choose to do, whether you decide to take part in certain customs and traditions is your choice. My purpose in these subjects is to fill the gap where our education system seems to drop the ball. I will give you the background history of traditions that many of us blindly accept without really understanding. One of these traditions is Valentine's Day. For most people today, Valentine's Day is just regarded as a secular commercial day of love, a date where people show their significant other that they love them because someone else did a long time ago and it just grew in acceptance over time. Basically, because days like Valentine's Day just show up on our calendar and the retail big businesses start marketing to us, we just accept this day and look at it as harmless and partake in it. I mean, Valentine's Day is a huge day for business. It is estimated that in America alone, the country as a whole spends an average of $18.5 billion on Valentine's Day every year. But if you ask people why, you would most likely receive silence as an answer. Everyone knows that we celebrate love on Valentine's Day, but most people don't know exactly why we do and why it's even called Valentine's Day. So I think that's something that we should correct. Let's examine it. Let's begin. So where did Valentine's Day come from? Many people think that it's just one of those American holidays that we just partake in. It's just something that we as Americans do. But the celebration of Valentine's Day is not American. Others like to believe that it is a Christian holiday because it was named after a Christian saint by the Roman Catholic Church. But the truth is that Valentine's Day was made by the Roman Catholic Church to Christianize the pagan celebration of Lupercalia. Lupercalia was one of the most ancient Roman festivals, which was celebrated every year in honor of Lupercus, the god of fertility, also known as the god Faunus. This festival, which celebrated the coming of spring, included fertility rites, orgies, fornication, sex with minors, drunkenness, and other activities like the pairing off of women with men by lottery. Lupercalia was a fertility festival dedicated to Faunus, as well as to the founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus. During this time, the winter solstice is long gone, and the pagans are now seeing that the days are getting gradually longer. This was one of the most important fertility festivals for pagans. The festival was held on the 15th of February in the Lupercal, where Romulus and Remus were said to have been nurtured by the she-wolf. The place contained an altar and a grove sacred to the god Lupercus. And Lupercal, the Luperci, who were the priest, assembled on the day of Lupercalia and sacrificed goats and dogs. These animals were known for their strong sexual instinct, making them most appropriate sacrifices to the god of fertility. Then the Luperci cut thongs from the skins of the sacrificial animals and ran in two bands around the Palatine Hill. They would whip any women who came near them. A blow from the thong was supposed to make a woman fertile. It's said that young women would actually line up for the men to hit them. Now, if you just dig a little deeper, you can understand further what is being celebrated. Lupercalia is believed to be connected to the ancient Greek festival of Arcadian Lycaia and the worship of Pan. Lupercalia is the Roman form of worship of the Greek god Pan. Pan can be traced to the sun god, Baal. He is the horned god. And we know Baal is none other than Nimrod. Nimrod was the original Lupercus. The Lupercalia, the festival of the Romans, held during the time we know today as Valentine's Day, was a festival to honor Nimrod, just in this Roman form. This is paganism. In ancient pagan Rome, the month of February was sacred to Juno Februata, the goddess of the fever of love. Juno Februata was also the goddess of women and of marriage. February 14th was her festival day. A box was provided from which single men could draw a billet, a small piece of paper on which a woman's name was written. The couple would then form a temporary liaison for the erotic games to follow. 
Sometimes they were remain partners for the following 12 months. Marriage sometimes resulted from this practice. So these days were used to celebrate fertility in ancient pagan Rome. It was a pagan festival day that goes back to the honoring of Nimrod. This was what happened during this time in ancient history. So where did the name Valentine's Day come from? Valentine's Day is said to be named after a few Christian martyrs who the Roman Catholic Church named saints. According to one story, Roman Emperor Claudius II imposed a ban on marriages because too many young men were dodging the draft by getting married. At that time, only single men had to enter the army. There was a Roman physician and priest who had converted to Christianity when it was a persecuted religion. His name was Valentinus of Terni, and according to some of the stories, he used to marry Christian couples in secret. It was said he wore a ring with a cupid on it, which is used as a symbol of love. We'll cover that soon. The ring helped soldiers recognize him. When he was exposed, he was imprisoned, tortured, and beheaded. Later, he became a martyr and the patron saint of true love in marriages. While awaiting execution, he was visited by young lovers with notes about how much better love is than war. Some think of these love letters as the first Valentines. Valentinus' execution occurred on February 14th in the year 269. Later on, after Rome adopted Christianity and the Roman Empire fell and the Holy Roman Empire began, the Roman Catholic Church made changes. The church was opposed to this display of open eroticism and sensuality that occurred during Lupercalia. In the 5th century, Pope Gelasius declared February 14th a holy day in honor of Valentinus instead of the pagan god Lupercus. As with most non-biblical customs found in the church today, Lupercalia was simply given a Christian-sounding name and adopted into the universal Catholic Church. They adopted some of the pagan celebrations during Lupercalia to reflect Christian beliefs. For example, as part of the Juno Feberata ritual, instead of pulling girls' names from boxes, both boys and girls chose the names of martyred saints from a box. They were expected to emulate the life of the saint whose name they had drawn. And this is where we get Valentine's Day from. It was a rebranding of a pagan festival worshiping fertility. They did this to make it easy on the pagan converts who were coming into their new popular Christianity. These pagans were unwilling to give up their satanic pagan rituals. So instead of putting a halt to the growing paganism of the church, the Romans took the approach of blend and incorporate. But changing the name of a pagan ritual doesn't change the fact that it is still a pagan ritual. So this is where Valentine's Day comes from. It is completely pagan. During the Middle Ages, it began to be incorporated with love. And that's where much of what we know of it today comes from. But let's look at some of the symbols that are used today with Valentine's Day. The Red Rose. You think this flower was just chosen because it is beautiful? Not at all. Venus was the Roman goddess of beauty, love, fertility, and sexual immorality such as prostitution. She was the Roman equivalent to the Greek goddess Aphrodite. Venus is the mother of Cupid. Her favorite flower was the red rose, which then associated the red rose with love. Because Valentine's Day became associated with love, in honor of the pagan goddess Venus, or Aphrodite, the goddess of love, red roses became synonymous with Valentine's Day. Just remember, if you look up most customs of today, you will often find a pagan god in connection with it. Does this mean it's pagan to love a red rose? Obviously not, but you should know why it is connected with Valentine's Day. Buying red roses for your loved one does not make you a pagan. I want to make that clear. Cupid. Most people don't know this because he's often portrayed as a little baby boy, but Cupid is a pagan god. Like I said earlier, his mother was the goddess Venus. He is the counterpart of the Greek god Eros. According to the myth, Cupid was the son of Mercury and Venus, Mercury being the winged messenger of the gods, and Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. Cupid often appeared as a winged infant carrying a bow and a quiver of arrows. Legend has it that Cupid 
shoots magical gold tip arrows at both gods and humans. By piercing their heart with an arrow, he causes individuals to fall deeply in love. This is why you always see a heart with an arrow. It's a representation of the pagan god Cupid. He is portrayed today as a little cute chubby cherub with bow and arrow, ready to shoot people and affect them with pangs of love. But he is an ancient pagan god. He is not just a little cute baby with an arrow. When you reference anything with him, you are participating in pagan beliefs. This is why he is associated with Valentine's Day, because it is a pagan holiday. Now, just the lustful nature of Valentine's Day as a whole is according to the pagan ritual of fertility. This is the time where people would gather their lovers for the year. This is not a day to get caught up in. Everything surrounding this day is pagan. It was then rebranded as a Christian holiday, and today it is looked at as secular, but it is not so. Anytime you have holidays that are connected with pagan gods, if you are a believer in Yahshua, you must completely abstain from them. Today, it is marketed as a day of love, but it is completely, again, a pagan holiday. Many of its customs and practices have changed and evolved over time. But at the heart, it's all about pagans and their gods, a way of celebrating them. It goes back to Nimrod. It's very easy to get lost in the crowd and just partake in it, because that's what the majority is doing. Because they make it seem as if it's secular and does not have any deity attached to it. It's just about love and fun. But a simple understanding of Cupid clearly shows that that's not true. For a believer in Yahshua, we are called to be set apart from the world. Not following the crowd. We are not to be of this world. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 2 says, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. We are to learn the ways of our Father. We should not follow pagan activities just because the world makes it easier for us to do so. The Apostle Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary matters of the world, and not according to Messiah. We must protect ourselves from the ways of this world. Valentine's Day is not a major day, but it still is a pagan holiday. It's easy to overlook. Listen, if you want to set aside a day to tell your husband or wife that you love them, pick another day and time to do this. You do not need to celebrate with the world. If the world tells you that February 14th is the day you are required to show your wife or your husband how you love them, make sure you don't. Remember, you are not of this world. It is a pagan holiday, and as we are all trying to strengthen our relationship with the Father, when we remove our association with these practices, we will see our relationships grow. I made this video to briefly clear it up for those that were not really sure about Valentine's Day. I want you to clearly know it is rooted in paganism, and as believers, we must remove ourselves from these pagan traditions. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You now know truth about the day. Nothing really exciting in it, except that it's proven that the day was born from worshiping pagan gods. Be set apart from this world and be transformed. Love who you love every day. Live your life more through conviction of the Holy Spirit rather than living through conformity to the ways and traditions of this world. I speak about not being of this world often. I have a link to the verses on my website. I made a video about it as well. Learn more about being set apart and not being of this world. Nothing is harmless. Beware of these traditions of men. Being a follower of the Messiah is being set apart. So please, set yourself apart today. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't already done so, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to send a special thank you to all who donate and support this ministry. Your gifts are extremely a blessing, and I'm very thankful for you sowing into this ministry. Thank you for being a blessing and being obedient to Yahweh's call on your heart. Okay, thanks again for watching everyone. I love you all.